and we will go ahead and get started. So I have my painting here. I did just make up this painting. Um, this is not from a reference photo, which is rare for me. I use reference photos a lot, but I just wanted to kind of doodle with some trees and it's a fun little uh, free painting that we can do um, and not worry too much about how it turns out. We've got some little wildflowers in the front. I know the seasons are probably not matched up, but that's okay. I wanted to put wildflowers in the front, so that's what we're gonna do. Um, my paper, once more, Strathmore watercolor paper. This is great paper if you're looking for something that is um, cost-effective. This is not too expensive. Here's, the, here's what the front looks like. So if you need some watercolor paper, this is a great option. This whole pad is probably five to seven dollars, I think. My paints are Windsor Newton paints. These are professional grade watercolor paints. You do not need professional grade watercolor paints for this painting. Um, that is not required. Whatever watercolor paints you have are fine. And then my paint brushes are Princeton Neptune brushes. I have this larger oval one, a smaller four round, and then a smallest zero round. So a, a large, medium, and a small really is what you need for this painting. Um, I really like Princeton Neptune. If you're looking for some new watercolor brushes, that's a great option for you. Okay, so as we get started with this painting here, um, I think we're gonna do a pencil sketch first. So grab a pencil if you have one. And the first thing that we need is a horizon line. So this is where these trees meet the grassy area right here. So we're just going to draw probably about a fourth of the way up the paper, just a loose-ish loose straight line across the paper does not need to be perfect. This is just gonna tell us where those trees should kind of end. So about a quarter, maybe more like a third of the way up the paper. Okay, and then we can just, autumn flowers are mostly purple, white, and gold. Okay, cool, good to know. We'll do some purple, white, and gold flowers then. And then for the trees, I'm gonna start pretty much almost at the top here on the left and just draw kind of some uh, lumpy shapes. And these are kind of, going to decrease in height as we work our way across the paper. So you can see they start higher up at the top and then they decrease here towards the bottom. And I'm just drawing some little lumpy shapes just to give me an idea of where those trees are gonna go. It does not need to be perfect. Um, you know, that's just gonna give us an idea. Okay, that's really all the pencil sketch that we need to do. My camera is, uh, is my phone is set up in a canvas lamp. That's the brand canvas. Um, and they have these ring lights with a phone holder attached on an articulating arm. So it's really convenient for having it right over my painting. So I would check them out if you um, would like something similar. It's called canvas. Okay, so for this painting, we are going to work from top to bottom pretty much. So we're gonna do this sky first, and then we'll do um, some trees. We'll do that kind of letting it blend, and then we'll do the grass and then go back and add some details. So we're gonna go kind of top to bottom and do it that way. I will put this here for now so you can still see it. The first thing that we need to do is put a little drop of water in each of our watercolors. Mine are still wet from when I was painting yesterday, but I will add a little bit more water into these. And this just helps to dissolve that watercolor paint and get it ready for us to paint with. There we go. If you have a spray bottle, you could do that as well. I also just wanna say right before we get started here that this is just for fun. <laughs> this is what I like to say before all of these paint and sips. Um, we are just here to have fun, paint together, and uh, hopefully you'll learn something. Um, that's my goal. So try not to, if you're painting with me, try not to focus too much about the outcome of the painting. This is more about um, having fun and learning something and enjoying the process of painting. So. Um, sometimes beginners especially can get frustrated by how the painting looks. Try not to pay too much attention to that. Try to just enjoy yourself. Uh, be nice to me. Be nice in the comments. This is a positive place, please. So that's my disclaimer before we start and we will go ahead and get started now. So the first thing we need to do is paint this sky. So I did a little bit of a different thing with this sky where I put a little bit of peach down here at the kind of towards the horizon line, which I think it looks kind of cool. And I was a little bit of experiment, but I wanted to do that again. And it just gives you a little bit of warmth here as though the sun is kind of shining underneath the clouds just a little bit and kind of warming them up. So we need two colors. We need gray. You can just use black if you just have black in your palette. I would recommend mixing a little bit of blue into it. 
if you're just gonna use black, I have this Payne's Gray in my palette, so I'm gonna use that. And I'm gonna water that down a little bit. And then I'm also gonna grab some pink. If you have red, that is fine too. And I'm gonna put that in a separate spot here in my palette. Okay, so those are the two colors. And then we're gonna do a wet on wet technique. So we're gonna put water into this whole sky area first, and then we're gonna put that color into it. And that will help us uh, blend those colors together. So I'm going to take my brush with some water from my cup and just put this all over. And we're actually not gonna put the water on the whole thing, just overlap where you put those trees are slightly. Don't bring it, you don't need to bring it all the way down to the horizon line, just overlap the trees, that pencil line with the trees, just overlap that a bit. And that should be fine because we're not really gonna see anything. Okay, and then start with your gray and start at the top of the paper and just start putting some little brush strokes with that gray in to the top. And then don't pick up any more paint and just kind of work your way down towards the bottom and that will decrease the saturation of the color as you work your way down, and that's what we want. Then you can take some of this pink, it will probably turn purple with that gray, that's fine. And we're just gonna put a little bit of that down here towards the bottom. Does that make sense? So the gray is going from strongest up here to the lightest, and then pink is going strongest down here up to the lightest, so it kind of alternates, okay? And then you can kind of leave it like this if you want, or if you didn't tape your paper down to the table, you can pick it up and move it. And this will help that paint blend a little bit better with everything else that's on the palette. So I like to give it a couple little swirls and then put it flat and that'll stop the movement. Um, and one other thing that you can do is take a dry brush, I'm using my smaller brush, and you can pick up some of this extra paint. These things that I'm saying right now are all optional. You do not have to do anything beyond putting that color down if you don't want to, but I do like to sometimes pick up some extra highlights if you kind of dot it in there to look like um, clouds. You can also use this dry brush to pick up any areas where there's too much paint. If you've got too much water or too much paint on your paper, you can use the dry brush to pick it up. So I'm just kind of pinching it in my paper towel as I go, taking up a little bit of paint drying it back off and doing that as many times as I want until I have the sky that I want. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. As we're doing this, if you guys want to double tap the screen at any point, that sends me likes. It helps me out with the um, mysterious TikTok al algorithm, sends this live out to more people, which I always appreciate. So you can do it as many times as you want. Just double tap the screen. We're already up to 9,000 likes, so that's really cool. I'd like to see how much we can get up to throughout a painting. Okay, how's that going for everybody? If you're painting along with me, tell me in the comments how you're doing, how that's going, all of that. And I hope you're having fun so far. Wait, okay, I will wait a minute. off my palette. Great, good. That's what I like to hear. It's a little bit fast. I do apologize. I, um, that whole set, that whole sky section, you do have to do all at once just so that it all goes down on the paper and blends correctly. So I do apologize. Some of the steps I have to do in a row, but then I do take breaks like this. So just keep that in mind, but I appreciate you letting me know. I just spun my cutting mat around. <laughs> that's funny. That's awesome. Too purple, that's okay. Nothing wrong with a purple sky. All right, cool. Thank you all for your feedback. I appreciate it. I'll wait one more minute. If anybody has any art related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments while we wait, just so that you're not bored. Brush brand is Princeton Neptune. Got here late, didn't have time to get a paper towel using my socks. <laughs> That's awesome. 
Thank you. Thank you all so much. I appreciate it. Okay, I'm just going to start talking about the next step that we have. Um, if you're not quite there yet, don't worry. It is okay. So the next step that we have is to put these um, background trees in. And these are going to be our lighter yellow um, and red trees that we're going to put in here. So we're going to mix those colors up. Your sky does not need to be dry. We're going to let it kind of blend if it wants to. Um, and and then we'll kind of work our way to darker greens and stuff in the foreground. So the colors that we need for right now, so you can start thinking about it, are a nice light yellow, maybe more of an orange, and then like a rust colored red. So if you're ready to start mixing colors, you can start doing that. I'm gonna start with a nice light yellow. Put some water in these colors. Don't let them be too concentrated for now. And then I'm gonna switch to more of like a golden orange. Here, I'll move this down so you can see my colors a little bit better. Golden orange, and then like a rust colored red. So for that, you can use red and brown. I'm using a little bit of burnt sienna. Make up your own colors. These should just be like really nice fall colors here. There we go. Perfect. And like I said before, add some water to these colors. You don't want them to be too saturated right now. We are starting on the background. So we want to go lightest to darkest. So make sure you're adding water to each of these colors so they're not too strong. I can swatch these for you as well. Look at that lovely fall palette. Okay, grab some watercolor paper. Here is that yellow, nice light yellow, orange, and then that red. So you can see those are pretty watered down. They're not too strong yet. Okay. So what we're gonna do with these, I'm gonna use my biggest brush just to give me the most um, organic shapes. We don't wanna be too detailed with this. I'm gonna start with my lightest color. You can really start with any color, but I like to start with yellow. And I'm just gonna start kind of loosely filling in that uh, original shape that we had for these trees. And I'm just kind of picking up and putting down my brush, kind of dotting it all along there. My yellow is turning green. <laughs> oh, I had some extra, ah, that's why. I didn't clean my palette out all the way. You always gotta get the back side of this, don't you? Okay, so ignore me. Continue putting that yellow in there. Try not to mix it with your, <laughs> with your gray. I'll turn green on you. And I'm just gonna kind of fill in this whole section all the way down to the um, horizon line. We're gonna put yellow in this whole thing. This is the lightest color that we have. And so every color that we put on top of it is going to cover it up anyway. And it gives us a good base to kind of mix the rest of the colors on. So that's why I'm filling it in all the way. Then I'm going to go to my next color, my orange. There we go. And I'm just going to start dotting that in here. And because that yellow is still wet, we should get some nice blends with these colors. not doing anything too precise here. I'm just kind of dropping these colors in, letting them blend. And you want to just pay attention to the outside silhouette of your trees as well. Make sure they have a little bit of texture to them. They shouldn't be like rounded shapes. They should be texture. Okay, so there's that. And then we're going to take our last color here and just drop this in. I'm gonna go a little lower with this red here, so I'm not gonna put it up towards the very top. It's just gonna be more 
in the middle here. There we go. Okay. It's not going to look like anything right now. That is okay. It's not supposed to look perfect yet. It's probably not going to look perfect and that's okay. That's not the point. That's fine. Okay. So you can see we've got some lovely little color swirls happening there. That is good. And we're going to kind of let that dry. So finish up what you're putting your colors in and then leave it alone. I'm going to pick up a little bit of this extra paint here because it's too much and it will take forever to dry. So if you've got areas where the paint is really pooling, if you've got a lake growing on your paper, you can take that dry brush again and just touch it to those places and it will pick up that extra paint and it'll help it dry a little bit faster. If you've got a lake on your paper, it'll take a long time to dry. I'm still on this guy. I apologize if I'm moving a little too fast. I do try to get these done in about an hour, so sometimes it does go a little too fast for some people. Um, but remember, these are always uploaded to YouTube, so if you fall behind, just do your best, and then you can always go and watch um, the recording uploaded on YouTube later. If you're watching on YouTube right now, hello. Thanks for watching. The importance of the right paper is real. Yeah, definitely. You don't even really need expensive watercolor paper, but watercolor paper with watercolors is very important. Okay. Your painting looks beautiful. Thank you so much. And as we take a quick pause right here, I just want to let you know that my Venmo is listed in my bio and my PayPal is linked in my bio. I do very much appreciate tips. Even if it's just $5, buy me a cup of coffee. That is always super helpful. So if you'd like to do that, my Venmo is listed in my bio and my PayPal is linked in my bio. So you could use either. Okay. Name of the watercolor palette is Windsor Newton. All right. So while this is drying, Hopefully you're all caught up. If not, we have a very simple step ahead of us. We're just gonna put a layer of green down in the bottom of this paper so that we have, um, so that we have the whole thing covered and then we can go back and add some details. So just grab whatever green you have. My YouTube name is Hannah M P M as in uh, Mary. And it's also linked in the bio, in my bio, so you can find it there instead of having to type in my username. So I'm just gonna grab a little green from my palette. Doesn't have to be any sort of special green. I'm just kind of doing a medium grass green. That's what that looks like. Okay, and then as you're done with it, we're just gonna fill in this whole section here. If your tree section is not dry, that is fine. Let it blend. And if you want to get extra fancy with it, you can drop a few other colors in this green section as well. If you want to change your green to a little bit more brown, while this is still wet, you can add a little bit of that brown green in there. I like to do horizontal stripes here. You could also change it to a bit more blue put that in there. You can add a little bit of yellow in here, like a streak of yellow. That's always good. Where do you buy the bookmark shaped canvas? Um, so I cut my own bookmarks. So I just use a paper cutter that you can find at the craft store. And I um, cut my watercolor paper to the size of my bookmarks, which is two by six. So I cut my own. I don't, I have never seen any paper that's like pre-cut in bookmark size. So I just make my own. It is not hard. There you go. I'm dropping a little yellow in there to just add a little bit of color. All right, now we have color in all of our paper. It's some lovely fall colors, which I love. I'm just gonna continue picking up this extra paint that keeps gathering here just so that we get things moving. And I'll take a quick break here for you to catch up. If you have any art related questions, feel free to throw them in the comments. I'll answer a few questions for a minute. 
Do you do preference Windsor Newton over other brands? Do you switch back and forth between brands? Do you ever mix them? Um, I do. I, I prefer my Windsor Newton because um, I just have used them the most over the past two years since I bought them. And so I'm just most comfortable with them. But I do definitely have other palettes. Some of them are more beginner palettes from the brands that I work with. Um, and I think those are great too. I have a couple travel palettes that I'll take with me because this one's a little bit bigger and a little bit more bulky. So I um, I don't think I mix them usually, mostly out of laziness. I just, you know, once I have a watercolor palette out, I'll just use the one that I have out. That's a good question. Do you ever use a blow dryer to speed up drying? Absolutely. I have my hair dryer lives in my art studio instead of in my bathroom. Um, I just don't do it on these paint and sips because some people may not have a hair dryer. Do you use the watercolor pens? Yes, I've just started using watercolor pens. I got a set from Artistro and um, I really like them. I think they're really fun. They're not great for like doing whole landscape paintings like this because the brushes are quite small, but they're great for doing like doodles and stuff like that. So I really like those. Okay. Any tips on how to paint landscapes when all you paint is abstract? I would say you can paint some landscapes in a very abstract way and it'll still kind of read as a landscape. So I might try and experiment with that. Try mixing your style and just making it, you know, use a reference photo and, and use it as a um, point for your abstract paintings. Some paper is very textured and others as smooth comments. Um, that is just a personal preference. Some people like more textured paper and some people like smoother paper. Smoother paper is usually for watercolor artists that do really fine details and um, super smooth washes and all that stuff. Um, and then textured watercolor paper is better for stuff that I do, like landscapes and stuff like that, that aren't quite as detailed and exact. So, okay, good questions, everybody. I am going to move on just because we do need to keep it going. We're gonna do our next little section of this. If the tree section still isn't dry, that is okay. We're gonna we're gonna just move on anyway, and if it blends, that's fine. Um, we need a few more colors here. These are our darker trees in here, and so we want to build this kind of contrast with the trees that we just put in here, um, and then with these trees that are in front. So we need darker. We need a darker green, maybe a brown, and I like this kind of rust color that I put in there too. So darker green for that. Grab whatever green is in your palette, add some blue, add blue until it looks like a dark, dark green, and then add a little bit of brown to neutralize it a little bit. I already had brown in there, so I'm not going to do that. But that green, blue, and brown is my favorite way to make a dark green for trees. There you can see it there. Okay. And then mix a brown. If you just have brown in your palette, that is perfect. We need to overthink it. And then I'm gonna use this rust color that we used for the first layer of trees and I'm just gonna darken it a little bit. So I'm gonna add more paint to it just to make it a little bit more saturated. So it'll be something like that. Yep, there we go. Do you do pet paintings? I do sometimes. I have not been taking too many of them because it's not what I'm super passionate about. I do them mostly for family, friends, and stuff like that. I don't generally do them as commissions anymore. Okay, those colors are so saturated. Mine always seem to be so watery. Any suggestions? So yeah, really dig your, really dig your brush into those, um, into those colors. It helps that we water them down. If they, if your, um, if your pans have dried, add more water to them so that they dissolve a little bit more. Mine are super like swampy, and that's really helpful for getting a lot of color out of them. Um, yeah, so try that. Really dig your brush in there. Swirl it in there for several seconds so that you get some more color on that brush. Okay, so we're gonna do the same, a similar thing. We're gonna kind of go back and forth between all of these colors and just make another line of trees in front of the ones that we've already done. Okay, so I'm just gonna start with my dark green. And again, I'm just gonna kind of focus on what the outside looks like. You can see it's blending a little bit there, that's good. We want the outside to be textured, so that's the main thing. Then I might switch to my brown and just continue doing this. And, the, and as you kind of switch colors, 
maybe go back to my green. You don't need to wash your brush in between. They're all mixing on the paper anyway. And then we'll kind of get ourselves a decent little horizon here. Don't make it too straight of a line. Maybe go to my rust color here. As you switch your colors, they should all kind of blend together here. Let them blend. So it should kind of start looking like this. Okay, that's the idea. You can also do another color that I forgot to mention is just regular blue. And that's a really great color for shadows, this nice dark blue here. You can put that down here towards the bottom of these trees and that'll be a really pretty, like kind of dark shadow color. And that will mix in well with the, with the other colors that we're using. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Go forth, create your trees. Don't think about it too much. And just keep rotating your colors. I might make one all rust colored tree over here. Switch back to my green. Brown. You can see I'm just kind of rotating the colors, leaving some little areas where you can see the background trees through these trees. And I'm sorry I'm neglecting the comments, just give me a minute here while I finish what I'm doing. Okay, so something like that. I'm going to put a little more blue down here. You can go back and drop some of the colors in, just kind of dot it in here like this. That'll give you some extra texture as well while it's still wet. Kind of like that. Okay. Do you used to get this angle? I'm an artist and I can't find a way to post. Uh, I'm using a canvas lamp. The brand is called Canvas, um, like an art canvas. And uh, it's like an art, I'll show it to you after if you want, but it's an articulating arm with a ring light on the end and a phone holder. And it's awesome for filming art. I would really highly recommend it. It's fantastic. I'm gonna add a little bit of a shadow kind of underneath here with my blue. This is just a little texture underneath these trees down here. So it's not just a harsh line. Okay. And there is our next layer. Is the blue indigo? No, it's ultramarine blue, but because I wasn't washing my brush, it was mixing in with that green and the brown, so it's just kind of a dark blue. I do have indigo on my palette, but I wasn't using it. Ultramarine blue is my um, most used color, I would say, just generally. Another option that we have, just so I can tell you is to really water down that green and you can add a little bit of texture behind these trees actually ignore me i don't like that ignore what i said we're not going to do that i'm going to erase that if you get to it quickly you can erase what you <laughs> what you've done <laughs> with a dry brush okay i thought it was Payne's gray Payne's gray is ultramarine blue and um and brown mixed together that's what Payne's gray is um, and so it creates Payne's gray when, when I was, when I had brown on my brush and I mixed, um, ultramarine blue into it. That is how Payne's gray is made. Fun fact. Mine most use indigo, especially doing night sky. Yeah. Indigo is my favorite color. Um, it is, I'll show it to you. It's gorgeous. It's my favorite color to have on my palette. And it's the main reason that I made my own palette because no palettes really come with indigo. And I was like, well, I need indigo in my palette, obviously. Look at that color. It's just gorgeous. And when you water it down, it's a really nice um, blue. Okay. 
So let's do some um, wildflowers in the grass section here. So I think someone said purple, white, and gold were the um, are the fall wildflowers. So let's go with that. So let's do some purple ones, and then we can do some yellow ones, and at the end I'll do some white ones with gouache because we can't really do white flowers on watercolor. So let's mix us a purple. If you have purple in your palette already, just use that, but blue and red, blue and pink will make you a really nice purple. Water that down a bit. And then down here, we're just gonna create some little wildflowers. I'm gonna zoom you in here for what I um, am doing. It'll look a little bit weird at first. So I'm just gonna kind of create these little like flower shapes with my indigo just down here um, at the very bottom where it's closest to us at the, as the viewer. And we're just gonna make like little clumps of these. I'm adding little tiny dots here as well along with those bigger flowers. And we're just gonna kind of create little patches of these purple wildflowers. Okay, I might skip a little bit and make another little patch over here. I'm just kind of putting these in randomly. It'll look a little weird at first, but once we put some grass underneath these, I think it'll look more normal. At least I hope, that's the idea. not to make them too much too like orderly sometimes we can get into a pattern of like okay here's one here's one and they're like evenly spaced try and uh get away from that as much as you can it'll look a little bit more natural okay and then as we get towards these trees if you want to keep adding these i would just recommend you do dots those will look further away. Like that, okay? Add as many as you want. Okay. And then so that we can kind of get these into the grass. We're gonna make a dark green. So again, green, blue, and brown. Just making a little bit of it right here. And I'm using this smallest brush, like I said, and we're just gonna kind of connect these with some grass. So let the grass go through the wildflowers. It does not need to be behind. That is more natural anyway. I'll zoom you in, sorry. Hang on. There we go. So I'm just using my brush with this dark green and just kind of flicking it up in different directions and connecting all of these wildflowers with some grass. You can have some grass in um, by itself as well. And that should make it look like they're actually, you know, in there. Uh, synthetic versus natural brushes. I think these are synthetic. Natural brushes are quite expensive. Um, and I know some people probably have a problem with um, the fact that they use animal fur, but they are very good brushes. <laughs> I've used a few um, occasionally in my life, and they are quite nice to use, I have to say. Um, but they are quite expensive, so that is something that to consider, and your own morals probably go into it as well. So that is up to you. That's a personal choice. Okay, and we're not going to fill in this whole thing with grass um, because that would be too much. So we're just going to kind of put the grass underneath these wildflowers and not try try not to overdo it, I suppose. I might have overdid it there, 
but maybe we'll add a few flowers on top and it'll look better. <laughs> So there's what it looks like zoomed out. And once it dries, I think it'll be a little bit more subtle as well. Although that is mostly dry. I think it looks okay. I feel like it's better that I didn't fill too many wildflowers over here. I'm thinking out loud as we're doing this. So you'll hear my <laughs> my psychotic thought process but um I think I've filled in too many here but because there's not so many over here I think that looks okay um I think if I'd done this many all the way across it would be too busy but I think I think it'll be okay just with how I did it these are just things you kind of pick up on as you practice and learn you'll make a painting with way too many wildflowers and you'll be like all right where where, where did that what where did that go wrong what did i do so just adding in this texture and then once you feel like you've done it then leave it alone i don't have any coins so i just gave you over 303 likes that's awesome thank you so much Loosely drawn freestyle clumps of wildflowers. Perfect. Okay. So, uh, let's see. So, the thing about yellow wildflowers on what we've already done is that they are not necessarily going to read as yellow because we've already filled in this green. And um, it would have to be like super... Let me do an experiment real quick. Hang on. Might have to be like super concentrated. I feel like that might work. Okay, so if you want to add some yellow ones in there, you can probably do it now. Um, you just need to really dig into your yellow watercolor. Don't add too much water to it. And then as it's super concentrated, you should be able to, there we go, to throw some yellow wildflowers in here and they should show up. They might not as well once they're dry, but I'm just going to do these in little dots here. So these are not going to be quite as big, but they're just going to be little dots to kind of change up the texture in with these purple wildflowers. Kind of like that. They show up in person better than they are on camera right now. Yeah, these are kind of more gold, but I didn't think that my yellow was going to be strong enough. here. If they don't show up, I'll just go over them uh, with some gouache later. And that will definitely show up. Okay, there we go. All right, we just have like one or two more steps here, and that is to render these trees just a little bit more because they um, I like the colors and I like the shapes, but they need a little bit more detail. So, um, yellow will most likely blend in with the grass background. Yeah, exactly. So I wanted to use gold and that more orangish yellow just so, to try and get them to show up. They are kind of, as they dry, they are kind of blending back in with the background, but that's all right. Okay, so a couple things. I'm going to kind of tell you some options that we have for... Um, rendering these trees. One thing is to add a few trunks that are kind of going up, especially in these background trees. Um, so we'll probably do that. We'll probably add some leaf details around here, kind of putting in some details and blending them out a bit. And then in these trees in the front, we might add some darker trunks and um, maybe some of these little trees or bushes that are kind of in the front here that are the darkest. Okay, so that's the general idea. Let's start with the tree trunks. So we need a brown. And for this, we want it to be pretty watered down. We don't want it to be too dark for now. Then we might darken it later. And then in these trees in the background, 
we're just going to draw a few little trunks and they're not all going to kind of connect here because we want to give the impression later when we add some more leaves that some of this trunk is hidden behind some of the leaves of the tree. So I'm just kind of putting little dashes and such in here. You'll probably be able to see the straight up trunk a little bit better than um, than the branches. So I'm putting the trunk in there, but then just some kind of diagonal dashes for the branches, something like that. Uh, no, nobody has told me that. I've gotten a lot of people telling me I sound like um, a lot of different people. It's hard when it's your own voice because I don't know um, what I kind of remind people of. The main thing I've gotten since I was a kid is that I sound like my mom. <laughs> I, would answer, I would answer the phone from the time that I was like 10 and people would be like, oh, Diane? Nope, it's me. Yeah, thanks, Aunt Laurie. She sounds like her mom. That's all right. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Okay, so there's the tree trunks. I don't want to overdo that. And then we can take just the similar colors that we did for these background trees. So I'm going to take some orange, maybe more like this. Yeah, this orange right here. Water that down a bit. And we can just start adding some texture. So what I'm going to do is put down a few little dots of this new color and then just take a clean damp brush and blend it out a little bit because we don't want the really harsh details on there. We want it to kind of blend together. So I'm going to zoom that in. I'll show you again. I'm taking an orange color and I'm going to go kind of between these gaps that we put here in the trees, put down a few dots like this clean off my brush, dry it off some of the way so it's just damp, and then kind of go over it again, and that will loosely blend those details out. And it'll look a little bit more subtle, do you see that? So that's kind of the texture that we're going for. So just choose a few, a few other colors that you think would look good on here, oranges, yellows, reds, put down a, a small section of little dots, and then uh, blend it out with your brush. I'll do a kind of a red one here, just for funsies. I'll show you some different colors. So here's some red, nice bright red there. How many water cups do you have? Just one. Some people swear by using two, but I've never been interested in doing that. That's too much effort for me. There you go. So then it's blended out and you get that kind of tree texture um, without it being too aggressive over the top. Okay, so just experiment with that. Try that out. See if that works for you. Use different colors. Use that yellow that we were using before. Here's that yellow. You don't even really need to blend out the yellow because it's so light, so it's just adding that extra vibrance there. Okay. So, We'll just work on doing that for a few minutes. Use your imagination, use lots of different colors, but just try out that technique of putting down that little spot and then blending it out. You can also use the light green back there too if you're interested in doing that. If you wanna add, mix in some green back in these trees here, I might put some like down here. I'm not sure about my own though, that's okay. We're all just here to have fun. And while we're doing this, just to plug my own stuff since you're a captive audience with me, um, I do have my Venmo listed in my bio and my PayPal is linked in my bio. I do always appreciate little tips or gifts. Um, this is a full-time job for me, so um, I do always appreciate tips and 
this and such like, even just if you want to buy me a cup of coffee, three or five dollars, that is always super appreciated. Um, and thank you in advance. My Etsy shop is also linked in my bio. So if you click on that link tree in my bio, my Etsy shop is one of the top links on there. So if you'd like to check out the art that I have for sale, I've got lots of fall stuff on there, bookmarks and um, paintings and uh, let's see, what else? Stickers, postmarks, it's postcards, hello, um, stuff like that. So if you want to check out my art that I have for sale, that is always super helpful. My YouTube is linked in my bio as well. So this painting, this lesson will be uploaded uh, maybe later today or tomorrow. All of the previous ones are there too, so you can check those out. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And um, if you can't support me monetarily, liking and following and subscribing and all that stuff is always super helpful. So I do appreciate that too. And uh, I also have my Patreon in my bio. I have my art supply recommendations in my bio, my Amazon storefront. So if you want some of my art supply recommendations, those are there too. And yeah, thank you for listening to my plugs. I appreciate it. That's how I got to make a living. And thank you all for the likes as well. I appreciate it. We're up to 50,000, which is really cool. Okay, so I think I'm, I think I'm getting to the point where I don't really need any more texture back there. So I think I'm going to move on to the front. We're going to do the same exact technique. So the putting down the color and then blending it out just with these darker colors. So I'm just going to grab my mix a little bit more dark green. And this is where if you lost kind of some of the edges to your paint, your trees here, you can kind of redefine those. So just kind of putting some of that dark green down here, you can blend that out or you can leave it. Same thing here. So we're just gonna add some of that texture back that we may have lost. I'm gonna use that dark red color for the same thing. Hope you're enjoying this session as well. I always enjoy painting with you all. I host these every Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, I will be out of town again next weekend. I apologize. I'm so sorry. But uh, the weekend after will be a special Halloween um, paint and sip, so I hope you'll join me again Saturday at 3 29. Uh, I think that's the 29th will be the Saturday before Halloween, so I hope you'll join me for that. We'll be doing a fun um, Halloween themed paint and sip. So make sure you mark your calendars and come back then. Oh, I just got a tip. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay. And we can kind of go through and define some of these smaller bushes in front here if you want. Hopefully all of this is making sense. This is kind of the part where you um, take your painting and finalize it for however it looks for you. This is where I like to give you a little bit of independence. <laughs> did you outline the yellow trees or that just the waterline dried? That is just the waterline dried. I did outline them, but you can't really see it anymore. Um, it was pretty light. So yeah, that is just where that watercolor dried. And it gave me that kind of cool outline there. So that's what that's from. Good question. Yeah, I always do an announcement every Thursday. Thank you for um, answering that question, Elena. Eliana, they, uh, the video always goes up on Thursday, and then that's where you get to vote um, for the live lesson. Okay, I think I'm getting to the point where I think this is pretty close to done. Um, I'm, I actually I think I might add like a couple little tree trunks in here too. 
kind of use the same brushes for watercolor and acrylic. Um, you, well, you can. There's nothing wrong with that. You can, um, there's nothing illegal about that. You can do whatever you want with your art supplies. Um, watercolor brushes are not really made for acrylic paint. Watercolor brushes are made to hold a lot of water and acrylic brushes are made um, to hold a lot of paint, which is a different um, substance. It's thicker, as you might imagine, than water. And so you're, you'll find that watercolor brushes are too soft to paint with acrylic um, very well. So that's the main problem that you'd probably have with that. Just putting in some little trunks in the gaps here where you can kind of maybe see some of these trunks like peeking through. Kind of like that. What's your name on YouTube? It is Hannah M dot P dot, I think. Um, again, it's linked in my bio. So if you don't feel like going to search it um, on the interwebs, you can just go through the link in my bio and that'll take you straight there. That's a good idea. Okay. Try the Persian cats also. Wow, I've never tried a Persian cat brush. That's really interesting. Okay. And I think I might, if you want to stick around, I think I might do a few um, little white wildflowers here with gouache. So I will show you how I do that, but it is a little bit more mixed media because I'll be using gouache. Have you tried the Japanese brushes? No, I have not. I don't know what those are exactly. Um, I don't think I've ever heard of those. So I would have to educate myself. a good calm time thank you thank you so much i'm doing well thank you for asking i'm enjoying my this paint and sip here this is i think this is turning out quite well i like all these colors and i like the i like the texture i think i'm gonna fill this in here glaze that over okay Oh, I just keep, I just keep going back and adding more, don't I? It's the, the watercolor curse. <laughs> you just can't stop, can't stop adding things, can you? Reminds me of Idaho, that's really cool. I did just kind of make this up. I didn't really look at a reference photo for this um, when I painted this original, so this is a fun little experiment for me. Okay, let me grab some gouache. This is the gouache I use. It is, uh, the brand is M. Graham. This is great gouache. Um, I really like it. I just bought myself a set a couple months ago and um, it's a little bit more expensive, but I love gouache and this is a great um, product. Not sponsored. Although I wish they would. <laughs> Good palette recommendations for beginners. Um, so all of my rec art supply recommendations are in a tab in the link in my bio. So if you click the link in my bio, it'll open up. There's several options for you. Um, and there's a tab in there called art supply recommendations and that'll take you to my Amazon storefront. That's where all of the um, art supplies that I would recommend are listed. And I get a small, very small commission from those, and it doesn't cost you anything extra. So that's another way to help me out if you want to. Okay. I added a little bit of blue to this white just so that it wouldn't be so stark white when I put it down. How is gouache different from acrylic? So there's a couple ways. It is um, reactivatable. So that means once it's dry, either on the paper or on the palette, you can put some water in it and kind of scrub it with your brush, and it will... Um, come back to life, you'll be able to use it again as paint. Acrylic does not do that. Once acrylic is dry, it is dry, it is down, there is no blending it, there is no fixing it, you have to just paint over it if you made a mistake. So that's one of the differences. Um, also, gouache can be watered down really far to be used almost like watercolor. 
and acrylic can be watered down as well, but it won't give you the same effects that we just did for this painting, you know, this blending and stuff like that. Um, acrylic will not do that for you, but gouache will um, act a lot more like watercolor. So it's a really fun medium because it can be opaque when it's not, when there's not a ton of water added to it. You can see here I'm adding this, um, these wildflowers here right on top of my painting and it goes right on top and it doesn't show the previous color through but you can also use it like watercolor. So it's a really fun uh, fun medium to try. You can fix your mistakes really easily. Um, it's pretty low pressure, so I like using it. It's really great for sketchbooks and um, for landscape paintings and stuff like that. And also gives you a cool uh, like matte finish, almost like, um, like a poster. You can get really flat, um, colors with it and it will look almost like graphic design poster kind of situation so that's really cool too there's some great gouache artists on the internet that you can find okay I think that's pretty good thoughts on Windsor Newton field pocket set I have not tried it um I would love to try it at some point so there's those wildflowers how they look down on the paper can it be used on canvas? Um, I don't know, I think probably. I always just use it on watercolor paper um, because the watercolor paper is made to absorb it and I like that better, but I know people use it on Bristol board. I'm sure people use it on canvas. I just have not tried that before. Okay, it's time for the tape reveal. So if you stuck around, you get the best part, which is peeling this tape off. If you're finding that your tape rips your paper, heat it up with a hairdryer first. This is just Scotch masking tape from the hardware store. I've been using it for years. It works really well um, to not rip the paper for me. That's the best explanation I've heard. Thank you so much. And if you painted along with me, remember to sign your paper, put the date on your paper so that you can look back on it later and see um, when you did it, you can see your improvement. I hope you had fun. I'm sorry, I do not like mine, but I had fun. That's great. That's all I ask is that you have fun. And even if you don't like it, you probably learned something from it. So that's all that's important. And do you stretch your paper before painting? Nope. I just tape it down. Find my pen here. Nope. There it is. Okay. So I like to sign mine in this corner over here. Put the date on it, and today is the 15th. And this is paint sip number 74. There we go. All right. It doesn't leak to the next page. Nope, watercolor paper is very thick and it keeps um, all of the... All right. Again, thank you all for joining me. I do really appreciate y'all being here and painting with me. I hope you had fun.